All right. This episode is my bread and butter. Hey guys, welcome back to the Construction Veteran Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Friend. So for today's Monday Musing, we're going to be talking about field management, what your boy does. There's a ton of different aspects to what we do in the field. Depending on what type of company you work for or what your level of experience is, you may be a laborer, you may be a general superintendent, or anything in between. So what does field management mean? Really, it's managing the project in the field, right? It's in the title. So this means the people that are actually overseeing the work in the field. Now, some companies, we might have just one person running the entire field as a superintendent. Now, that superintendent is not only in charge of making sure that the schedule's on track and things happen the way they should, he or she is also responsible for the quality of the installation and the safety of their people. So it's a big hat to wear. Now, on very large projects or some companies, they might require a full-time safety manager, full-time quality control, a full-time project manager, and a full-time superintendent, sometimes more. So one thing about field management is you're focused on one project at a time, unless you're at like a general superintendent level and you're overseeing other superintendents and their projects. The pro or some might consider a con of field management is the fact that we get to wrap our arms around the entire project and make it ours. That means, how does the project look when you approach it? Is it clean? What kind of signage do you have up? What does your field office look like? The world's your oyster in the field. Some people might see it as a con though, because you're responsible for everything. You're responsible for all the people on your job site. So if you're not the type of person that's ready to take the bull by the horns and control it and make sure that the successes are your people's and the failures are yours because the buck stops with you, field management probably isn't the way you want to go. I honestly wouldn't have enough time to talk about all the aspects of what it means to be a field leader. So I'm just going to touch on a couple quick things. Let's talk about a generalized progression throughout the ranks, if you will, of the field. Some people might start out as a laborer. They might just want to understand what the job site looks like, but they're going to be doing very basic tasks, things like helping clean up, going to get tools and materials, or they might have something called a skilled laborer. Now that skilled laborer might have a little bit more skills than the laborer, so they might be doing a couple extra things, like maybe hanging some things on the wall, very basic tasks. Now after that, it could go a lot of different ways. So it depends, again, on what type of company you're working for. For example, as a subcontractor, if you're working in that trade itself, you're likely going to start out as an apprentice, work your way into a journeyman position, and then master level. As a general contractor, now again, my experience is going to differ from a lot of others, but typically you'll start out as a project engineer or PE, or a field engineer or PE, and they're kind of the bottom level in the field leadership for the general contractor. They might be doing general things like assisting with layout, laying down controls, northing z things, things like that. Or they might even be something like an office engineer, or PEs sometimes do this as well. They're focused on the submittals of the project, and we'll get into submittals and RFIs and things like that in a later episode. Now we will discuss the project management route, but typically a field engineer progresses into an assistant superintendent type of position. The assistant super might not be running a project, or they might. I ran my first project as an assistant. It was about a $2 million job. Great learning experience. Now, sadly, a lot of companies out there will give folks the title when they're just not ready for the position. And what I mean by that is, I'm very thankful that I was an assistant running a job before I became a superintendent. Now, past the superintendent position, again, each company might be a little different. There might be a senior superintendent position, there might be a general superintendent position, and usually those two, depending on the company, they're overseeing other superintendents in their jobs. Or if it's a large job, they might be the lead superintendent on that project. Past the senior levels, they might get into an executive type of level where they're less in the field and they're more overseeing maybe some office staff, maybe some of the business sales, things like that. So if you think about that progress, and I've seen it, there are people that might start out pushing a broom and all of a sudden they're the CEO of a company years later. The onus is on you to start but you can take your future in any direction. This is a great industry to be in. I am obviously very partial to the field. However, in upcoming episodes, we will cover project management. Thanks again, guys. And again, I definitely need some help here if you're willing to hop on board. It takes a lot of time to edit these things. I appreciate your time listening, and I would love to have other superintendents that I can interview for the podcast. 
appreciate you.